Welcome to the lesson on defining critical thinking. In this lesson, we'll review some existing definitions of critical thinking, how it's defined in particular by the THINK program at NC State, and review the intellectual standards that are used to assess critical thinking in the classroom. The definition for critical thinking that this THINK program has developed is based on some excellent existing definitions, such as this one by John Dewey which states that critical thinking is the active, persistent, and careful consideration of a belief or supposed form of knowledge in light of the grounds that support it and the future conclusions to which it tends. Peter Faccioni defines it as habitually inquisitive, well-informed, trustful of reason, open-minded, flexible, and fair-minded in evaluation. And Paul and Scriven define it as the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to belief and action in its exemplary form. It is based on universal intellectual values that transcend subject matter divisions, clarity, accuracy, precision, consistency, relevance, sound evidence, good reasons, depth, breadth, and fairness. Based on these excellent definitions and considering the context of our university, the THINK program defines critical thinking as the active, persistent, and careful consideration of a belief or form of knowledge, the grounds that support it, and the conclusions that follow. It involves analyzing and evaluating one's own thinking and that of others. And in the context of college teaching and learning, critical thinking deliberately and actively engages students in raising vital questions and problems and formulating these clearly and precisely, gathering and assessing relevant information, reaching well-reasoned conclusions and testing them against appropriate criteria and standards, openly considering alternative systems of thought or points of view, and effectively communicating to others the analysis of and or proposed solutions to questions or problems. Assessing both critical and creative thinking involves explicit activities that externalize students' thinking for you, the instructor, as well as encouraging them to think about their own thinking, i.e. metacognition, through strategies such as reflective prompts, peer learning, and discussion. On the next series of slides, you'll be exposed to the intellectual standards related to critical thinking that you will encounter throughout the certification. These standards are paired with specific and probing questions that help students better develop higher order thinking, reflect on their own thinking, and arrive at conclusions independently. The nine standards for assessing and developing critical thinking in students that we emphasize in this program are as follows. Clarity, accuracy, precision, relevance, depth, breadth, logic, significance, and fairness. It's important not only for students to apply these standards to their work, but also to use them to question their own approach to problem solving and to see gaps in their thinking that might cause them to miss important conclusions or processes. The definitions for each of these, as well as relevant reflective questions that you might ask, will be gone over a little bit more on the following slides. Clarity is defined as easy to understand, free from confusion or ambiguity, and lacking obscurities. Relevant questions that help develop and assess this skill are, could you give me an example or elaborate further? Could you illustrate what you mean? Accuracy is defined as free from errors, mistakes, or distortions, conforming to fact, truth, or some standards. Questions here might be, how could we check on that? How could we verify or test that? Precision, which is often confused with accuracy, is defined as accurate, definite, and exact. Questions here are, could you be more specific? Could you give me more details? For relevance, the THINK program defines it as bearing upon or relating to the matter at hand, having a close logical relationship to the matter under considerations. And questions we might ask here are, how does that relate to the problem? How does that help us with an issue? Depth deals with the complexities of the issues and involves asking questions such as, what are some of the complexities of this question? What factors make this a difficult problem?
For breadth, we define it as recognizing insights in more than one side of a question. And questions, and ask questions such as, do we need to look at this from another perspective? Do we need to consider another point of view? Logic is reasoning and understanding the set of rational considerations that pair upon the truth or justification of any belief or the settlement of any questions. To get to the root of this, we might suggest questions like, does all this make sense together? Does what you say follow from the evidence? Significance is having relative importance with questions such as, is this a central idea to focus on? Is this an important problem to consider? And finally, fairness is defined as treating all sides alike without reference to one's own feelings or interest. And the questions take a more reflective tone by asking ourselves, do I have any vested interest in this issue? Am I sympathetically representing the viewpoints of others? These intellectual standards are often most helpful in giving us a common language and common standard by which to evaluate our students and our own teaching effectiveness. They can be incorporated in a number of different ways, including in project or essay prompts, in reflective exercises, in quizzes, test assignment questions, in the way we're framing discussion questions, and in the way you're asking your students to evaluate and review the work of their peers. We are at the end of the presentation on defining critical thinking. We imagine that you had a good foundational understanding of critical thinking before this lesson, and we hope that this presentation has helped you think more specifically about the language around critical thinking, start to consider how it might be used in your classroom and curriculum, and identify some of the questions you could ask your students to externalize critical thinking in their work.